So this is when we'd be looking at entertainment in Roman life. So you're going to look at sources. Okay, so sources in history is very, very important. So you, so you have a primary source and a secondary source. Okay, so, so primary source could be something that is done in that time. Let's say a letter or a building. Okay, so sources, primary sources. Secondary sources are done after let's say by a historian who wrote about it or a video, okay? So we are going to look at two videos here now about the Roman baths and the Roman amphitheater. So remember amphitheater, amp <laughs> sorry, it's a very difficult word to say, amp amphitheater. Uh, it's just like a stadium, okay? Where they're seeing the gladiators fights, okay? So we're gonna look at two videos. So these videos are secondary sources because they talk about the history of the past. It hasn't been done at this that time. Okay, so these are secondary sources. So a history book you read is a secondary source. And a video of history is secondary sources. So you're gonna look at a video of the Roman baths first. Yeah, I'll do full screen. The water in Rome was expensive for individuals, so people took advantage of public baths for both socializing and at the Roman baths, people could relax, socialize, and catch up on the latest news. Come with my family and I on our visit to Roman baths. When Romans first arrived at the public baths, they would exercise in the placentia. This contained a swimming pool and a gym. After a long workout, I can head over to the spa, where slaves give visitors an oil, olive oil massage. The first bath we visit is the Frigidarium. This is the coldest bath. So look, this is the coldest bath. Wow, this book. Cool bath flexes the muscles after an intense run. I think it's high time to visit the warm bath, what the natives call the tepidorium. So frigidorium is cold, tepidorium is warm. After a long day at the Colosseum, the warm water feels great. So this is an example of a Roman bath, so bathhouses. So Romans used to come here and socialize, so talk with their friends, okay? Work out to them. So a frigidorium was a cold bath, tepidorium was a warm bath. My honey and I are he heading to the caldorium, the hottest of the baths. So there was frigidorium, cold, tepidorium, was warm and caldorium was hot. Okay, you can see the steam rising here in this Roman baths. This hot water feels fantastic. I wish I knew about the impressive engineering feats that created these magnificent Roman baths. Water was constantly supplied by aqueducts and flowed into the baths. There was heated using a hypercar system which blew hot air up from the floor. So basically, aqueducts was like canals. Okay, it brought water into the city. So then they used to heat the water underground and hot air come up from the floor. So that's how the steam came. Roman baths were decorated with mosaics and columns. This was extravagant, contained massive statues of gods. So you usually be very clean, very nice, with statues, paintings, or mosaics. Okay, so it was a very beautiful place to go. 
When Roman, Romans visited the baths, they first paid a small entrance fee, then exercised before visiting the tapidorium, they would next have, head over to the caldorium, followed by a massage. After this, they would go to the tapidorium. Remember, tapidorium was warm, then finish it in the frigidorium, which was cold. Caldorium was the hot one. Okay. Okay, that's that finished. So that was a secondary source. Okay, guys, a secondary source because the secondary source is with is what a historian has written about. It hasn't been done at that time. Next, we're looking at a video on the Roman amphitheater or Roman stadium. Okay, so here it is. So this person is going to be talking, this historian is going to be talking. So. In the city of Rome stands an ancient stadium, the largest amphitheater ever built. Once the home of battling gladiators, stage sea battles and reenactments of ancient myths. Today, it is a tourist attraction and an icon of ancient Rome. Although partially ruined, it has endured for nearly 2,000 years. Originally called the Flavian Amphitheater, it is now known around the world as the Colosseum. Construction began on the Colosseum in 72 AD under the direction of the Emperor Vespasian. Built by thousands of slaves and made of stone, bricks, and concrete, once complete, it could seat 50,000 people. It was 620 feet or 189 meters long, 512 feet or 156 meters wide, and 158 feet or 50 meters tall. That's as tall as a 12-story building. Although it would take only eight years to build, Vespasian died before it was finished, and the Colosseum was opened by his son, the Emperor Titus. The first games held in the newly completed Colosseum lasted for a hundred days. Admission to these games was free and helped keep the Emperor popular with the people of Rome. Thousands of animals fought and were killed as crowds cheered. Everything from elephants and tigers to bears and bulls. Criminals were also executed there. Sometimes they were used in reenactments of ancient myths and stories where the character would be attacked by animals, like Prometheus, or flung to their death, like Icarus. The most famous attractions of the Colosseum, however, were gladiators. Professional fighters, they battled each other in a combat to the death for the entertainment of the people. Successful gladiators could become celebrities, drawing huge crowds and earning riches that would allow them to retire in comfort, assuming they lived that long. Sometimes, however, a more impressive spectacle than gladiatorial combat was held in the Colosseum. Mock sea battles called Namakia. The Colosseum had been built on the site of an artificial lake, and underneath it ran channels that could divert water from a nearby aqueduct to flood the arena floor until the water was deep enough that real ships could sail on it. Once the sea battle was over, the Colosseum could be drained quickly to allow another event to take place on dry land. These sea battles were only held in the Colosseum for a short time. Soon, the area under the arena floor was remodeled and a complicated structure called the Hypogeum was built. 
The hypogeum was an underground maze of tunnels and cages with elevators that allowed animals and gladiators to suddenly enter the arena through trap doors in the floor. Fighters in the Colosseum could never be sure what their next challenge would be or where it would come from. Fights and hunts were held in the Colosseum for hundreds of years. Over time, the amphitheater was damaged by fire and earthquakes, and by the 6th century, its use as an arena was largely over. In 1349, a major earthquake toppled part of the outer wall, and the fallen stone was taken away to use in other buildings. For centuries, the Colosseum crumbled. Okay, so that's the Colosseum. So as we look at them two secondary sources, we can now look at a primary source. So that was all about the Roman baths and Roman amphitheater. Okay, so I thought this was screen, guys. So this, guys, like I mentioned, a vid that video was a secondary source. This here is a primary source. Okay, done at that time. Okay. So you can see some information. It gives us information from that time. So this is a primary source. So what information can you get from this source? So look at it closely. Okay. First of all, it was important for the Romans as they had made claim and clay tablets about the events. So this was very difficult to do. So you can see a chariots and horses. So this was chariot racing. So they did this out of clay tablets. So this was obviously very important for the Romans because this took a very long time to complete. That the Romans enjoyed watching chariot racing and the Romans enjoyed watching people die in the form of sport. So we get a lot of information from this tablet. Okay, so this was a primary source. There's also primary sources. So th this one was written by a Greek writer describing the baths in Rome in AD 50. So on the left are the lounging rooms, next rooms to undress in, on each side with a large hall between them, in which are three swimming pools of cold water. It is finished in Laconian marble and has two statues of white marble in ancient style, one of Hygieia, the other of Aspius. On leaving this hall, you come into another room, which is slightly warmed. So remember Frigidorium and Tepidorium and Caldorium. Then near this is another hall, the most beautiful in the world, in which one can stand or sit with comfort. Next comes the hot corridor, faced with Numidian marble. The hall be beyond it is very fine, full of abundant lights and a, a, a glow with colour, like that of purple hangings. It could contains three hot tubs. Should I go on and tell you about the exercising floor? It is beautiful, with two devices for telling time, a water clock that makes a bellowing sound and a sundial. So guys, this was written Two thousand, nearly two thousand years ago, so AD fifty. Okay, so this was nearly written two thousand year years ago. So this would be a primary source. Okay, it's very important to know the difference between a primary source and a secondary source in history. Okay, so this was written at that time. Okay, so you can see the author is telling us about the bath baths in Rome. Okay. He's saying it's very beautiful with marble and he's explaining the two, the three different rooms, the colds, the warm and the hot rooms. So I want you guys now to evaluate the source on its relevance. Is it a good source to use? So which do you think it's better to use? A secondary source or a primary source? Okay, so what can you learn about Roman life 
about the source. So from that source, the writing, what can you tell about Roman life? Okay. So this source, what can you tell about Roman life? Okay, guys. I uh, this lesson's finished. Hope you have a good day. Bye.